Singapore's clean streets, low crime rate, and expanding economy have earned it recognition as a model of urban efficiency. But the city-state may not be as ideal as its reputation suggests, despite being unquestionably wealthy and advanced. Under the guise of success, Singapore demonstrates areas where it falls short of its lofty reputation. A closer examination reveals significant limitations and drawbacks that undermine its claim to greatness. In this video, we'll be talking about why Singapore is not all that, and a few of the factors involved. Before we start with the chapters of this video, please put some empathy behind. What do you think about this little red dot? Let us know with some facts. Singapore has all of the characteristics of a contemporary first-world metropolis. But beneath the surface, you'll discover a soul-crushing homogeneity that saps the vitality and character from the area. With 74% of the people identifying as ethnic Chinese, this city-state resembles a suburban Chinatown rather than an active global powerhouse. One issue that seriously undermines Singapore's grandiose ambitions is the whole severely lacking in natural resources argument. It's the furthest thing from a natural resource superpower, really, when you're a tiny island republic that only occupies 283.5 square miles. Apparently, they operate out of the world's smallest storage closet, yet still producing everything from ribeye steaks to iPhones. In 2022, the nation's imports of goods and services were over 150% of its GDP, placing it among the highest in the world. Singapore's dependence on these resources is evident from the fact that over 90% of its food is imported from more than 170 countries and regions. Due to its heavy reliance on imports, Singapore is susceptible to disruptions in the global supply chain and price volatility both of which can have a significant effect on the country's economy. In spite of Singapore's well-established reputation as a highly developed and efficient metropolitan center, the lack of domestic resource capacity in the country may provide some dangers that need to be properly managed. Despite Singapore's reputation as a well-oiled urban machine, another flaw has emerged – the exorbitant expense of living. They seem to have taken the idea of land scarcity to another level entirely. Even those property prices. A one-bedroom apartment in the city center typically costs around $2,500 per month in rent. And forget about trying to find a house to buy. It's no surprise that the inhabitants have had to get inventive with their housing arrangements. But it's not just housing that will make your wallet scream. Something as simple as purchasing a new car is prohibitively expensive in Singapore. The administration appears to have a peculiar fascination with taxes and tariffs, as if they're attempting to transform the country into a moving traffic bottleneck. Here, even a quality bottle of wine and a pack of cigarettes is considered luxury items. True, Singapore is famed for its efficiency and success, but when it comes to the expense of living, it seems like they're attempting to wring every last penny from their citizens. Another element contributing to Singapore's mediocrity is its stringent regulatory environment and restrictions on personal freedoms. God forbid you try to stand out in the throng. The government here has raised micromanagement to an art form, enforcing a complex network of rules, laws, and social restrictions that would embarrass even the most ardent authoritarian. Do you want to voice your political opinion? Better keep it to yourself. Feeling like dyeing your hair a strange color? Sorry, but that's not Singaporean enough. This is a place that appears to value order and conformity above all else, sucking spontaneity and individual expression right out of everyday life. But at least, they're giving the media a fighting chance these days. According to the World Press Freedom Index, Singapore has made a miraculous leap from the dismal 160th spot in 2021 all the way up to a dizzying 139th place in 2022. Woohoo! Way to go, Singapore! 
Now they're only, what, a few dozen countries away from achieving complete press freedom nirvana? Gotta love those incremental victories. And of course, we can't forget the way this whole lack of freedom of expression thing has really helped spur on innovation and new ideas in the country. I mean, when you've got the government's boot firmly planted on your creative throat, it's no wonder Singapore is just churning out one groundbreaking solution after another. They're probably too busy trying to figure out how to turn silence into the next big export to worry about trivial things like free speech and democracy. It's difficult to avoid being overwhelmed by the sheer volume of mindless, pasted-together architecture that permeates Singapore's streets. Entire expressways, bland malls, and glassy towers. This is a metropolis that looks more like it was created by and for corporate accountants than for real people. The few historical buildings that remain feel almost like museum pieces, preserved not out of any real appreciation for heritage, but simply to provide a veneer of character to an otherwise drab and generic urban environment. And the less said about Singapore's pathetic attempts at public spaces and green areas, the better. These meticulously manicured parks and plazas feel about as natural and inviting as a really well-kept corporate campus. The city as a whole actually has a peculiar disconnection, as if the various districts and neighborhoods were pieced together arbitrarily. It's just an endless sea of concrete, steel, and glass, punctuated by the occasional sky park or ferris wheel, as if to say, see, we've got culture too. But the real tragedy of Singapore isn't just its soulless infrastructure and lack of urban character. It's the way the stifling conformity steeps into the very fabric of the culture itself. This is a place where creativity and free expression go to die. It's not just the media that's struggling in Singapore. The education system is giving it a run for its money in the comically rigid category. You have a strong emphasis on rote memorization and rigorous testing which leaves about as much opportunity for creative thought as a penguin in a sauna. What's the end result? A motley bunch of risk-averse, test-score-obsessed automatons who care more about padding their resumes than expressing their inner Picasso. Furthermore, the education system in Singapore, which is frequently commended for its academic excellence, might be the cocoa powder that masks the country's dismal performance. As it produces many top achievers, Singapore's educational system has also come under fire for allegedly undermining pupils' capacity for critical thought, creativity, and entrepreneurial spirit. For people who are always looking for fresh experiences and wild environments, Singapore might not be the most interesting place. However, Singapore can be a veritable paradise for people who appreciate security, stability, and a good standard of living. Here, the elements of a happy life are established. Yet, citizens are free to travel and see the outside world whenever they feel like it. Remember, a country's value isn't defined by a small number of criteria, but rather by how well it satisfies the many needs and desires of its people. But to genuinely become a great global metropolis, Singapore must adopt a more forward-thinking and inclusive attitude as it meets the challenges of the 21st century rather than settling for mediocrity.